Hey guys, welcome to Physics 390 class 21. This class is on the Zeeman effect and hyperfine structure. Um, the Zeeman effect has to do with what happens when you apply an external magnetic field to an atom. And hyperfine structure has to do with what happens um, <clears throat> because of the uh, interaction between the dipole moments of the proton and the electron in the hydrogen atom. So this is taken from chapter 7.4 to 7.5 of our textbook. So let's take a look at some of these uh, effects. So um, the Zeeman effect, um, this is a picture here of Peter Zeeman, who first studied this effect back in the early part of the 20th century. So the Zeeman effect is a shift of an atom's energy levels due to the presence of a uniform external magnetic field, which we call B external. Okay. So we apply a uniform uh, external magnetic field to an atom, and we see a shift of the atom's energy levels. Okay, so how does that work? Well, <clears throat> let's concentrate on an atom with a single electron. So hydrogen, for example. So we have the Zeeman Hamiltonian, or the energy associated with the interaction, which would be just minus uh, mu, the magnetic moment, of the electron dot B, the external magnetic field. But the, uh, <clears throat> the, in, the magnetic moment of the electron is made up of an orbital part, mu L, and a spin part, mu S. So mu is mu L plus mu S. So we have minus mu L plus mu S dot B external. And then um, we have a couple relationships here um, relating the uh, mu S, the um, Di spin dipole moment of the electron to the, sorry, the uh, magnetic dipole moment of the electron to the spin of the electron. It's minus E over M times the spin uh, angular momentum. And uh, <clears throat> similarly, um, we have the uh, di orbital dipole moment of the electron is minus E over two M times the uh, orbital angular momentum. So using these two relationships, we can re rewrite the relationship above here as uh, E over 2M, it's got this E over 2M here, times L plus 2S dot B external. Um, so if we just substitute in here for um, mu L uh, as minus E over 2M times L, we get the E over 2M M times L, and then we get uh, plus uh, let's see, since we're dividing by two out here, we have to multiply the spin by two. Um, so you can verify that this, this expression becomes this expression when we substitute in these two, um, two uh, relationships between the dipole moments and the spin angular momenta. Okay, so that's our, um, what we call the Zeeman Hamiltonian, the interaction between the electron and the external field. So how we treat the Zeeman effect, the effect of this interaction, depends on how the magnitude of B external compares to the magnitude of the internal field, B internal, um, associated with the orbital motion of the proton. Because remember in the spin orbit interaction, the, uh, the proton orbits, is effectively orbits the electron, creating a current and a magnetic field, which we call B internal. So how we're going to treat the Zeeman effect is going to depend on whether the external field we have is large, uh, large compared to this, um, large compared to this internal field, or small compared with this internal field. Okay, so we'll look at these two cases. So the first case for the Zeeman effect, Zeeman effect is B external is small compared to the internal field. Okay, so um, here we would treat the um, Coulomb interaction, that is the, the electrical interaction between the electron and proton, plus the um, fine structure, which includes the spin orbit interaction and the uh, relativistic correction for the electron um, kinetic energy. We treat those as the our unperturbed Hamiltonian H0. And that's because with B internal much bigger than B external, the fine structure interaction is going to be a lot bigger than the um, the Zeeman interaction, um, because B external is so small. So we treat the Zeeman Hamiltonian HZ uh, or H prime Z as a perturbation. 
on this uh, unperturbed Hamiltonian, which includes the uh, fine structure. So the unperturbed eigenstates, um, which we can use when we treat this as a perturbation, are N, L, J, and M, J. Um, so uh, N and L are the principal and orbital quantum numbers. J is the total angular momentum, and M, J is the um, component of that total angular momentum in the z direction. And those are the uh, good quantum numbers for this unperturbed Hamiltonian H0. And um, these unperturbed eigenstates have this particular energy, um, E n j, depends on n and j. Um, so uh, it's minus 13.6 eV over n squared. That's the Coulomb energy. And then the rest of this is the fine structure uh, energy, which, which bears a resemblance. Um, it's just a little bit different a little bit of a transformation from our fine structure energy bef uh, before. It includes this alpha, which is the fine structure constant. But anyway, this is the, the expression for the energy of these unperturbed eigenstates. So we can find the energy correction, um, the Zeeman energy correction, by taking the uh, expectation value of the Zeeman Hamiltonian, which we just recently looked at, involving the uh, e over 2mb dot l, um, the quantity l plus 2s in this unperturbed eigenstates. So we have uh, e over 2m b external um, k hat dot the expectation value of l plus 2s. And this k hat just means we're taking the uh, b external to be in the k hat or, or the z direction, okay? So this is our energy correction. Um, so, after some additional arguments um, to, to kind of simplify things and find the expectation value of uh, S and L um, <clears throat> involving uh, S, L, and J, the total uh, uh, angular momentum J, and you can refer to the text for these arguments, we arrive at the expression for the correction. Easy one is mu B, G, J, B external M, J. Okay, so mu b, we call the Bohr magneton. The Bohr magneton is the basic unit of atomic uh, angular momentum. It's E h bar over 2m. It's just, this comes up so often, it's convenient to have a, um, it's convenient to have a symbol for it. So it's, and Bohr was the first to write it, so it's called the Bohr magneton. And then this gj is, um, comes from these arguments involving S, L, and j. This is the so-called Lande G factor, where um, it combines <coughs> the uh, J, L, and S quantum numbers in this way. One plus quantity J, J plus one minus L, L plus one plus S, S plus one over two J, J plus one, okay? And then, so it's proportional to the Bohr magneton, to the Lande G factor, and to the external field, which is, makes sense, the bigger the external field, the bigger the energy correction, and also to mj because it um, couples to the z component of the total angular momentum, since the field is in the z direction, uh, the k hat direction, which is the z direction. Okay, so notice the correction um, here depends on mj directly, depends on mj directly, as well as on l, because in the Lande g factor, it depends on l. So the total energy, which before um, with the unperturbed Hamiltonian just depended on the quantum numbers N and J, now with the correction also depends on MJ and L. So the total energy now depends not only on N and J as it did before, but with the perturbation, the Zeeman uh, Hamiltonian in, it also depends on MJ and L, okay? So that means there's no degeneracy left here. Okay, so the, all of the, um, <clears throat> with a uh, different N, L, J, and M, J, they all have different, uh, different energies, okay, with, the, with this perturbation from the Zeeman Hamiltonian. Okay, so that's case one for the Zeeman effect, where the Zeeman Hamiltonian is smaller than the spin orbit, and so it's a perturbation. Um, case two for the Zeeman effect is if the 
external field for, um, that we apply is much bigger than the internal field that the proton is providing on the electron. So, so now um, <clears throat> things go as you might guess. Um, now with the Zeeman energy bigger, we treat the Coulomb, the regular hydrogen interaction, plus the Zeeman interaction together as the unperturbed Hamiltonian and the fine structure Hamiltonian as a perturbation because the, the field associated with it is uh, much smaller than the field associated with the Zeeman um, interaction. So um, <clears throat> in this case, the unperturbed eigenstates are actually NL, ML, MS. So those are the um, eigenstates of H Coulomb plus H Zeeman. And um, uh, those have energies uh, E, N, M, L, M, S equal to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the um, regular hydrogen energy minus 13.6 EV over N squared plus the uh, Zeeman energy of mu B Bohr magneton B external M, L plus two M, S. Note that um, in this expression for the energy, the L quantum number doesn't appear. So now it's possible to have um, the same values of N, ML, and MS, but have different values of L. So for example, uh, let's see, um, N could be two, um, L could be one, ML could be one, and MS could be a half. But N could also be uh, three, um, L could be uh, two, um, ML and MS could be, uh, each ML could be one and MS could be a half. So there's, for, for a particular um, combination of N, N, M, N, ML, and MS, there's several values of L which are possible. So we have degeneracy with respect to L, um, multiple values of L with the same energy. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so we find the energy correction um, using uh, um, non-degenerate perturbation theory. Um, it's the expectation value of the fine structure, which is HR plus HSO in the uh, unperturbed eigenstates, which are NL, MS, ML, MS. So, um, and after some additional arguments involving S and L, um, because the spin orbit involves S and L, we arrive at an expression for this. And I refer you to the text for the details of that. Um, for the correction, the fine structure correction. It's 13.6 EV over N cubed alpha squared, where alpha is what we call the fine structure constant, which is about one over 137. It it's, doesn't have any dimensions. That is, it doesn't have any units. Times this combination of uh, all four quantum numbers, three over four N minus uh, quantity L times L plus one <clears throat> minus MLMS, over L times L plus one times L plus times L plus one L times L plus a half times L plus one. Okay, so there's some steps here, but this is the final result. Um, so notice the correction here, the fine structure correction, makes the total energy depend on L as well as what it did before, N, ML, and MS. It depended before, but now. Uh, this correction depends on N, ML, MS, and on L. So again, we have, uh, we've, um, with the, the correction term, the perturbation, we have eliminated the um, degeneracy. So there's no degeneracy left here. Okay. So we've looked at the Zeeman effect in two, um, two limits, where it's uh, strong compared to the uh, fine structure and where it's weak compared to the fine structure. Now we're going to look at the uh, other effect the, um, that we're talking about in this uh, video, the hyperfine splitting. So the hyperfine splitting in hydrogen is due to the interaction between the magnetic dipoles of the proton and the electron. Okay, so the basically the proton magnetic dipole creates a field and the electron magnetic dipole exists in that field and has an energy in that field. And that's the interaction energy. So <clears throat> the proton dipole moment is much smaller um, due to the proton's larger mass. Um, the magnetic moment of the proton is, 
this uh, G factor for the proton, which I'll mention in a second, times the charge of the proton over two times its mass. Um, and the mass of the proton is about, oh, 10,000 times greater than the mass of the electron. So this mu proton is going to be much smaller than mu electron, which is E over Me. So because Me is much smaller than Mp, the uh, magnetic moment, uh, magnetic dipole moment of the electron is much bigger. So because the proton's dipole moment is fairly small, that's giving, uh, that gives a fairly small, um, uh, it gives a fairly small um, interaction for the hyperfine splitting. And the factor GP for the proton is found experimentally to be 5.59. Okay, this factor GP. Um, <clears throat> that's because the proton is made up of a bunch of things called quarks and they interact in a kind of an unusual way. So that's why we get this kind of strange or not uh, particularly even number 5.59. Okay, so <clears throat> when we put in expressions for the dipole field of the proton and how the electron interacts with it and make some additional arguments, they lead to the following correction. Okay, so I'm, again, I refer you to the text for some details of this gets a little technical, but the hyperfine splitting correction is uh, mu naught times this uh, uh, G factor for the proton times E squared, because we have the magnetic moments each have an E over MPME coming from the magnetic moments. And this three pi A cubed uh, comes from an expectation value over uh, the space of the, um, the uh, one of the hydrogen wave functions. And then we have the expectation value of uh, sp dot se, this the dot product between the spin between the two spins, which is uh, comes from the dot product between the magnetic moments, since the um, magnetic moments are proportional to the spins. So we have that following correction, and then some further arguments <clears throat> involving rewriting this sp dot se give us that uh, sp dot se is one half. S squared minus SE squared minus SP squared. Uh, <clears throat> so we can get that by taking um, S big S, which is the total of SP plus SE, taking it the dot product of it with itself, and then uh, expanding and solving for SP dot SE. So we get this expression here. Um, <clears throat> and so this uh, can be simplified uh, because we know the expectation values of S squared and SE squared and SP squared. Um, and this actually shows, um, among other things, that the correction, this correction here, splits the triplet and singlet states for the proton and electron spins. So remember, the triplet states are basically when the proton and electron spins are lined up together, and the singlet states are when they are uh, anti-aligned, roughly speaking. So we have the triplet state equal to this constant, which is similar to this constant. It's got some H bars in it because of the expectation value of SP dot SE, um, <clears throat> plus a quarter for the triplet, minus three quarters for the singlet. So the difference between them would just be this quantity here. This is time, not plus a quarter, but this is, uh, the triplet is this times positive one fourth. The, the singlet would be this quantity times minus three fourths. So the difference between the two, the triplet and the singlet would be this expression here, this four GP H bar to the fourth over three MP ME squared C squared A to the fourth. Okay, so what's the significance of that? Well, um, this transition between the triplet and singlet state, um, well, there can be a transition between two energy levels which are split. Um, they can, if it gets, if something gets up into the triplet state, it can fall down into the lower energy singlet state and give off a photon of radiation in the microwave spectrum. It turns out the energy is in the microwave spectrum at a wavelength of 21 centimeters. And this uh, <clears throat> energy, this wavelength of 21 centimeters is actually seen widely in astrophysics. Um, there's this, all, all through the universe, we see this uh, microwave uh, wavelength of 21 centimeters. It, it it's, plays a prominent role in uh, the 
radiation from galaxies and astrophysics. Since there's so much hydrogen in the universe, it's a very important um, spectral line. Okay. All right. So just a brief summary in this uh, in this video, we've looked at the um, Zeeman effect, which is the effect of a constant magnetic field on uh, the energy levels of atoms. We've looked at the case where the Zeeman effect was uh, strong, um, and we looked at the effect with the case where the Zeeman effect was weak, and we found that in both cases. Um, we used perturbation theory um, to find <clears throat> the, uh, that the degeneracy um, was completely broken um, in the first case by the fine structure interaction and the second case by the Zeeman interaction um, when it's the weaker interaction. And then we looked at the hyperfine splitting um, a little more in depth the, between the magnetic dipoles of the proton and the electron. And uh, we found that um, uh, <clears throat> it's, um, we found an expression for the uh, dipole splitting, and we found that it's responsible for this very um, significant uh, spectral line of 21 centimeters. Okay, so thanks so much for your attention, and I'll see you in class.